right, we're checking out the only game where you can effectively become the worst parent in the entire universe. It's Universe Sandbox. Normally, I would say this is the sun. It is not. This is I am your father. It is much smaller than the sun. And its job today is to find out if it can make a totally lifelike Earth. I shouldn't really say lifelike. I should say life producing. You can see that I am your father keeps vomiting up massive solar flares. I'm sure that'll be fine. There's one right there. <laughs> we caught it mid vomit. Now, in order to start this, we need planetary bodies with which to come together and create the vast mineral compositions that you need for an Earth. That is, in fact, what we're doing today. We are going to make an Earth. It might not be exactly like Earth. It would be like Earth's dollar store twin. Now, in order to make an Earth, we are starting things in the only way that makes sense for such things. Violence. I have created over 100 different asteroids, and they will fight to the death to create one winner Earth asteroid. I'm gonna go ahead and just let things go around here. Now, eventually the orbits will, uh, you know, kind of start to interfere with one another. And like the freeway, they're just going to start randomly smashing into one another. Just random asteroids. Lots and lots of random asteroids. More, more! Daddy, chill. All right, now there's a few hundred there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. I wanted to show you too, this is what it looks like inside of the highway of death. Look at how many different celestial bodies are flying past. It's like an interstellar dodgeball. We have, hold on, we have our very first explosion. I, there it is. Notice it just exploding wildly. A little bit of color in a sea of, I don't know what that, this is just the lines of orbit, I guess. So the idea is, is that as these things start to impact one another, one of them will become a much larger body of mass and will begin to suck up all of the extra, like, solar goo that's just kind of laying around. And that will create a very large radius. You can see one of them is already much larger than the other. Okay, someone just shot out of the... <laughs> One of the asteroids just shot out of nowhere. Just got shotgunned into the- Whoa! Okay, we've got a few more that are flying out into the nether realm. About uh, 14 years have passed so far. Like I said, someone is going to end up being the winner. I just don't know who. Oh, here we go. This is a big thing over here. Look at- look at the- look at the formation of this thing. It looks kind of cool. Well, this is the original name of it, and it is- uh, well, it's actually one half the radius of Earth right now. I'm gonna let it suck up a little bit more stuff. I really have no idea if the elements that are crashing into that thing are going to be good enough for Earth, but they were, we'll find out. You can see the one glowing thing in the middle of all of this. I think this was our original one that ended up getting pretty big. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost the same radius of Earth, but it's kind of slurped up enough stuff to the point where it's lost a lot of its uh, like weird topography. It looks very smooth now, but this is good. We're, we're at a good spot right now. You know, the only problem is the average temperature of this place is 1300 degrees Celsius. It probably needs to go and cool off. There we go. I'm kind of curious what the actual potential for life is right now. Uh, it's zero, probably because there's no water on it. I will name you only child. <laughs> okay, so now we can start back again with I am your father, and then we can go ahead and add the only child. All right, the only child is now firmly in the habitable zone. I'm gonna let him just kind of orbit for a little bit. This is actually kind of a cool orbit because the only child is in the habitable zone part-time and then it's kind of in the blue area. So I'm not really sure if everyone's going to constantly freeze or if half of the planet will just become Canada for, you know, like part of the year. I love how it changes, like the habitable zone changes. Like if you click on the sun, it's like it's over here. If you click on the planet, it's like, no, it's not. We're just gonna take the, the sun's word for it though. Now we're gonna have to add water to this thing. The only way that you can add water to a planet is just like I mentioned before, obviously through violence. Let's see here, what, what do we got? Five kilometers, okay, 10 meters, not big enough. 13 kilometers. Gotta go ahead and launch this. There we go. This is actually made out of silicate water, baby. Go! All right, should be heading on a direct collision course for only child. We're just going to follow along as it begins and ends. Obviously, we're going to need a lot more water than that. So, <laughs> ooh, 
It is making water. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna have like a perfect belt line of water. Let's see what the composition of Only Child is right now. There we go, okay. Yeah, it's got some water. That's not too bad. Ooh, life likelihood. We got our first little bit of percentages. Got like uh, 4,600 centimeters of water potential depth. In case you're wondering how much that is, it's 46 meters. That's not bad. Obviously, it's going to need more. I'll spread it around a little bit. What I'm actually going to do, because we're not getting enough water quick enough for my liking, is I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it, uh, let's see here. Let's make it, uh, uh, yeah, like that big. That should do nice. I'm gonna go ahead and slow things down for this. I don't know why, but there is literally like a black Dragon Ball Z anime aura surrounding this thing as it comes to impact the only child, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna go ahead and let that happen. Oh, yes! Say hello to atmospheric pressure, baby! That looks awesome. That looks absolutely awesome. I am a big fan of the way that this planet is currently coming together. Look at the anguish that has happened. Look at the incredible flames. But more importantly, look at the water amount. Life likelihood shot way up. Now, obviously things are getting really hot, so it's gonna have to get back down to normal <laughs> before it goes back up. Go ahead and speed things along here. Let it go. Let it, oh, okay. Yeah, as it cools down, it's starting to look pretty legit. All right, let me go ahead and pull on back here. There we go. I have created the Eye of Sauron. I'm not kidding. This is a planet that is looking at you very intently. That's pretty cool though. It does have an actual atmosphere now. Not only does it have an atmosphere, it has cloud cover. Huh. What's the uh, life potential? Oh, wow. 22.4%. Now it does need a little bit of a stronger atmosphere because the average temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, it is going down. It is continuing to go down. You're gonna notice it was at 40.7, 39, 38. So maybe this is just a matter of letting more time go by, 33. Now we're getting into Floridian areas. Okay, yes, 30, 29. Okay, now the people in Florida are actually not sweating to death when they walk outside for 10 seconds. Oh yeah, this is happening right now. Again, it's taken 172 years, but this is totally working. 25.5. Nice. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do is make sure that there's enough nitrogen and oxygen. How do you get nitrogen and oxygen onto a planet, you ask? You urinate it on there. I'm not kidding. Nitrogen. And there we go. Now we're going to throw some oxygen in there. All right. Now the atmospheric density is kind of starting to get into a normal area at this point. I've given my planet sunglasses. That's actually what I've given it. That is unbelievably strange to look at. It's kind of like an alien planet. Well, there we go. The atmosphere is starting to spread throughout the planet now. It was all just weirdly concentrated in like one single area. Wow. The atmosphere got us up now to 36.3%. We are going to have to add more water because there's only one lake and it's 218 kilometers deep and there's really no water anywhere else. There are places with 7,600 meters of ice though. That's fine though. We can tinkle a little bit of water on there. Here, you ready? And just kind of shoot a bunch of water. How's that taste? Is that good? You can actually see the planet like sweating from the water kind of like getting wet you see it see it kind of like dripping around as we add it all right let's go up you know all the only thing you, there we go i was gonna say the only thing you really need is just more zeros put a little bit on the poles there there we go yeah a little on the bottom like so perfect now my planet looks like a sumo wrestler. All right, gonna go ahead and let time pass here so that the water goes ahead and kind of like sits where it's gonna go. I'm not exactly sure how, but now there's like an onyx black band surrounding the planet. This is probably one of the coolest planets in the solar system. Well, it's the only planet in the solar system, but it is really cool looking. All right, we're still looming around 34.4% life likelihood. 37.9, add a little more nitrogen. 39. Oh, there's, a, there's a, a very delicate balance of atmospheric anguish that you have to give people. Oh, the surface gravity is a uh, very temperate 6.14 meters per second squared. 
That's like, what is that, like two thirds of Earth? So that's nice. Now that the atmosphere and water has actually like, you know, what is this, 900 years later, properly spread, we have a legitimate looking planet. Like it has everything. It is covered in water. It has frozen poles. The water is evenly spread. I mean, kind of. <laughs> Look at the pock marks on this place. Gas pressure is pretty nice. Liquid depth goes all over the place. But again, if you go like, if you travel in the middle of the planet, it's right around 11 kilometers deep. Surface temperature is great. You gotta kind of live like right up here. Now, what is the one thing that the planet is missing that I think will obviously give us the rest of our life likelihood percentage? It is an enormous impact from something that can become its moon. Obviously. Uh, let's see here. What do I want to launch at it? We're going to need something to introduce all kinds of new elements and stuff. Yeah, Mars, you don't get enough love. You get to get launched at the planet. How's that make you feel? Mars is like, not great. Listen, this is for the betterment of all mankind. Now, this may look like it's going to end everything, but don't you worry. Sure as the, the planet is randomly spewing odd stuff all over from the poles, this impact is unbelievably important. Ah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, look at that right there. Color, depth anguish now once again we're gonna have to like you know pass by many 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 years and one of these fragments will stabilize all right let's just keep rolling here faster okay there we go the atmosphere is starting to chill out you can see the tops and the bottoms of the planet is starting to show itself we gotta let time go by here the average temperature isn't isn't enough yet i'm not gonna throw a little magnetic field in there there we go three hours later the temperature of the planet it right now is looking really legit like it's 22 degrees celsius right now if we go over to composition we're at 90.6 percent earth similarity and actually if we zoom out we did end up getting one tiny fragment that is managing to just kind of follow the only child around it is unbelievably small the radius is only 78 kilometers so it basically does nothing i'm kind of curious what happens if i make this moon size i don't know if it will destroy the planet or not but honestly there's only one way to find out you know Okay, just kind of start doing a little bit of that. There we go. What could possibly go wrong? 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers. Let's do radius of the moon. Where's that at? There it is. Oh, wow. It's already two tenths of the radius of the moon. Isn't that nice? Just going to keep this moving. Now, the only child isn't very large, so... I'm only gonna have this, you know, a certain size that's somewhat similar to how big the only child is. And there we go, yeah. I'm just gonna call this the stepchild. I'm gonna go ahead and let time go by here. Like how there's one random dent in the forehead of my planet, it's like way up here. There's also this odd black spot on the planet. I don't know what that is, but yeah, there's like, there's like one weird dent way up here. I think that's, uh, was that like ice on the top of the mountains? Yeah, it is. <laughs> this one area, this might be where Mars impacted is 8.2 kilometers tall in elevation compared to everything else. You can actually see it like lifting off of the planet from here. And as the only child rotates, you can go ahead and land upon the surface in order to look at its moon, travel across the sky, along with the cloud. There it is, stepchild. Setting, <laughs> setting in the horizon. And as the sun rises, yeah, we chose violence and recreated the earth with a 90 something percent accuracy rating. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Universe Sandbox. Till next time, stay foxy, much love.